Hello people, in this video we want to look at uh, potassium sparing diuretics. So example is what? Spironolactone, correct? Lactone. So let us look at this one now. First of all where we are, we are looking at diuretics chapter. Diuretics means they dilute the urine, urine will be very dilute, there will be a lot of water loss from the body. So if a person has edema, you can give this so that he will lose the water, excess water. And also it can uh, control uh, hypertension, it can reduce hypertension because it will reduce the blood volume. Water will become less, right? So blood volume will become less and the blood pressure will come down. So that's how you can treat hypertension also. So we have seen the classification of diuretics. We saw that there are high ceiling diuretics or loop diuretics, example furosemide, toracemide. Medium efficacy, we saw thiazides and thiazide-like compounds like hydrochlorothiazide, benzothiazide, chlorthalidone. Then we have come to weak uh, uh, diuretics. So in weak diuretics, we have seen carbonic anhydrase inhibitor like acetazolamide, which is used for uh, glaucoma, treating glaucoma. Then we saw osmotic diuretics like mannitol, glycerol, isosorbide, etc. Now we are here, potassium sparing diuretics. Currently we are here, right? So we are looking at potassium sparing diuretics. So the things that can dilute the urine can remove excess water from our body, right? But they will not take potassium with them. They will leave the potassium in our body and go. So these are potassium sparing diuretics. Example, spironolactone. It is actually a prodrug which is converted into an active form in our body. This is an aldosterone antagonist, right? It is an aldosterone antagonist. Are you able to see? So it is an aldosterone antagonist, spironolactone. Then you have renal epithelial sodium channel inhibitors, example amyloride. Okay, so you should know at least these two names, spironolactone and amyloride. There's actually one more, eplirenone, eplirenone. Okay, so basically uh, let us look at the details now about spironolactone, eplirenone and amyloride. Okay, first of all understand the normal working of uh, normal working of uh, our body you should understand okay in this diagram we have tried to explain this then we will come to spironolactone first of all understand where we are okay this is a nephron correct this is the late it's distal collecting duct or it is the collecting duct okay dct or dis, uh, collecting duct here what happens here Uh, this is the lumen, right? This yellow thing, what is shown here, this is the lumen, this is the cell of the DCT and this is the uh, blood blood vessel, okay? So here you have uh, aldosterone, which is in our body, right? That aldosterone, which is a mineralocorticoid hormone, it comes and binds to the mineralocorticoid receptor, which is there in the cytoplasm of the cell, okay? Then once it binds to this mineralocorticoid receptor, the combination that is mineralocorticoid receptor that is MR plus AL that is aldosterone, they enter the nucleus and then from here the synthesis of AIP that is aldosterone induced protein, AIP happens. Now what is synthesized? Aldosterone induced protein is synthesized. Okay. What will this AIP do? The job of this AIP is to make sure that it is to make sure that sodium is reabsorbed into our body and potassium is thrown out in exchange. Okay, this is the job, normal physiology, this is of aldosterone, what aldosterone does. Okay, this is what aldosterone does. So what happens if sodium is taken in? If sodium is taken into our body, water also follows it, right? Sodium fall, wherever sodium goes, water goes. So here in the urine, there'll be very little urine because water is being reabsorbed into the body. But now you are giving spironolactone. What is spironolactone? Spironolactone is an antagonist of aldosterone. Spironolactone is a antagonist of aldosterone. So aldosterone work is opposite. So what will happen here? There is no aldosterone induced protein. So sodium is not reabsorbed. If sodium is not reabsorbed, where will sodium go? Into the urine. And potassium is not given away. So potassium will be retained within us. Did you understand? 
So now sodium is going into the urine. So what will happen? Water will follow. Right? As water follows, there will be lot of urine. So now the body will lose water. So there will be loss of water. So edema and hypertension will get corrected. So did you understand? And basically here what happens? Potassium is not lost. Potassium levels in our body will be high. You understood, right? So basically what, uh, one more thing you have to understand here guys. So I hope you understood this much till now. You know that you have seen so many diuretics till now. Now what they do, like loop diuretics, what they do, they were increasing the uh, secretion of sodium. So they a loop diuretic was increasing the sodium levels in the urine. Then you had thiazides also which was increasing sodium level in the urine. All the work of loop diuretic and thiazide, what was happening? This aldosterone was the sodium potassium channel here was just reversing it. This uh, loop diuretic worked so hard and said let's throw out the sodium. Thiazide said let's work hard and throw the sodium out. Here there was one person sitting and said whatever you are throwing out now I am taking it. I am taking the sodium and uh, actually I am going to throw potassium. So this aldosterone was doing this kind of work where the effect of loop diuretic and thiazide was completely like it is um, like there is some problem here. Right? Sodium is being reabsorbed and potassium is being lost and we don't want to lose potassium. The more sodium they are throwing out the more potassium we are losing. So to put an end to all this comes spironolactone, spironolactone or other potassium sparing diuretics which are going to stop this so that whatever sodium has been thrown out has to now go to the urine. Hence water will follow and there will be more urine. So this is the effect of spironolactone or eplenrenone or amyloride. Okay, these are the potassium sparing diuretics. So now let us look at the theory part. Spironolactone is an aldosterone antagonist. This you already saw now. You know this. The structure is similar to aldosterone. Okay. It is a steroid. Yes. It stops the reabsorption of sodium and it stops the loss of potassium. This also you understood. Now as sodium is lost into the urine, this acts as a diuretic because sodium is being thrown out of our body. It acts as a diuretic. As potassium is not lost, it acts as a potassium sparing diuretic. This is pretty clear hopefully. Sodium is lost, so it's a diuretic. Potassium is not lost, so it is a potassium sparing diuretic. Calcium is also lost. Okay, Calcium is also removed. It is secreted into the urine. Now coming to the pharmacokinetics of the spironolactone, they are given orally. The active metabolite of spironolactone is canbrenone. Please focus here. Spironolactone is a prodrug. The active metabolite is canbrenone. So this is what you should remember here. Spironolactone is a prodrug. It is metabolized in liver. The active metabolite is canbrenone. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing to note here is spironolactone works well when there is more aldosterone. Interesting, right? It works well when there is more aldosterone. So now let's move on to the uses of spironolactone. It is used along with loop diuretics and thiazides to reduce potassium loss. You already know this, right? So it is used along with loop diuretics and thiazides to reduce potassium loss. Edema, um, it is used to treat edema. This also you know. What type of edema? Edema like nephrotic edema, cirrhotic edema, which is associated with hyperaldosteronism. Okay, so edema. Okay, it is used along with loop diuretics and thiazides. It is used to treat edema. It is used to treat hypertension. What type of hypertension? Resistant hypertension due to primary aldosteronism. It is also used to, uh, used in heart failure to reduce load on heart. And it is also used in Kohn's syndrome where there is primary hyperaldosteronism. If there is primary hyperaldosteronism, you can give an aldosterone antagonist like spironolactone. Okay. So that completes the uses of this tablet spironolactone. Now let's move on. 
to the adverse drug reactions not at all difficult guys what will it cause hyperkalemia because the uh, blood uh, calcium uh, potassium levels will increase and it will lead to nausea vomiting diarrhea peptic ulcer obviously you are giving it orally so all this can happen it's a steroid it will have hormonal effects so in men it can lead to anti androgenic effect like gynecomastia can be there loss of libido can be there or decreased libido can be there in women there can be menstrual irregularities so the solution here is to give other potassium sparing diuretic like epirenone which is li less likely to cause gynecomastia you know what gynecomastia and all is right enlargement of the breast in male and there can be mental disturbances and other cvs cns effects guys so those were the adverse drug reactions of spironolactone so if you know that it is a steroid if you know that it uh, retains potassium are these difficult for you not at all right you know it's given orally so all these problems will be there you know it's a steroid so there will be hormonal problems you know it's a potassium sparing diuretic so there will be hyperkalemia so all these are very simple adverse drug reactions now coming to drug interactions of spironolactone spironolactone basically when you give it along with aca inhibitors or arbs that is angiotensin receptor blockers there can be dangerous hyperkalemia so potassium levels will increase to dangerous levels you should not give this along with potassium supplements right so if you are giving somebody potassium supplements and giving spironolactone he will go into hyperkalemia also bananas have lot of potassium so they should be very careful in their diet also aspirin blocks uh, spironolactone action okay then look at this spironolactone increases digoxin concentration so digoxin uh, toxicity who doesn't increase almost all the tablets on earth they mention the same thing right so that that was the drug interaction of spironolactone i think that's all we wanted to cover so guys we are done with uh, potassium sparing diuretics we have spoken of about spironolactone and uh, epirenone right amiloride also is a potassium sparing diuretic <clears throat> it's a direct uh, acting one and look at this it's a renal epithelial sodium channel inhibitor obviously it will inhibit sodium channel what else work they have on earth diuretics they all want to inhibit sodium channels only so guys we are winding up this video on potassium sparing diuretics we will meet you in the next video take care take rest bye bye